Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, and peace and blessing be upon his last messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him, his companions, and those who follow the right path. Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and His grace. Welcome again to Understanding Islam Ramadan. Dear beloved viewers, Psalm or fasting is a magnificent worship and moral progress because it is built upon a self-supervision of our thoughts, speech, and actions for the sake of Allah Almighty, all of which will bring us very close to Allah Almighty, inshallah. That is why we must understand Ramadan and know its rights and rules. Otherwise, we might lose this once in a year opportunity, and that will be a great loss. As the Messenger, peace be upon him, said, unfortunate and has incurred a loss anyone who reaches Ramadan and does not get forgiven. Abstaining from food and drink is the easiest part of psalm or fasting. A true complete psalm is far from the apparent abstaining from the primal needs of food, drinks, and intimate relationships for a certain period of time. For psalm to be complete, it must be both physical and spiritual. It must be performed by the body, heart, mind, and soul, and must reflect on our speech, actions, and behavior. Otherwise, psalm will lose its benefits and its goals. It will only be a routine or formality, more like a body without a soul, a meaningless hunger and thirst that does not have any real effects on our lives. The verses of the Holy Quran and the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, clearly show us that this is not the way Psalm is meant to be. There are great aims and wisdoms behind the obligation of Psalm. And if we do not understand them, do not understand Psalm correctly, and practice its rules and morals in our lives, we will lose the great benefits of Psalm and fasting as well as losing the rewards associated with them. We should ask ourselves, are we practicing fasting correctly? What is the use of psalm if it does not stop us from atrocities and abominations? What is the use of fasting if it does not stop us from lying and falsehood? What is the use of psalm if it does not restrain us from backbiting and gossiping? What is the use of psalm if it does not deter us from slander and defamation? What is the use of psalm if it does not restrain us from sins and wrongdoings? What is the use of psalm if it does not elevate our souls and refine our behaviors? Dear viewers, we must understand the correct way of psalm and fasting and practice it as it is meant to be, taking care to observe its rules and the important moral guidance. We will learn more about the true psalm or fast, inshallah, after this short break. May the blessings of the holy month be on us all. See you soon. Welcome back to Understanding Islam Ramadan. Today we are taking a look at how essential morals are to psalm and how fasting is part of your overall spiritual well-being and development. Dear viewers, psalm is not a routine activity practiced by family and friends. It is a great form of worship and the third practical pillar in Islam. It has great importance and significance. It should have a positive impact in our lives and in our manners. A fasting person is supposed to be of a higher moral standard while fasting, pushing himself to further and promoting his good behavior and good characters. There are many people who are careless about this and are not influenced by psalm and fasting. Ramadan comes and goes without any positive change in their lives, without any impact on their conduct, and without any moral benefit. 
Dear viewers, there are many behavioral and moral requirements from a fasting person, such as sincerity, patience, truthfulness, endurance, perseverance, helpfulness, and charity, among others. Yet, one of all these morals stands out and was mentioned specifically by the messenger peace be upon him, and that is truthfulness. Humanity agrees that truthfulness is one of the best moral characteristics of any person, and it has great effects in protecting people's rights and properties and regulating their relationships. Islam came and made it one of the established pillars of the faith and the most important single characteristics of a Muslim, and one of the defining characteristics of a believer, a true believer. The messenger, peace be upon him, said, the believer is the one who, when he speaks, he says the truth. And a hypocrite is the one who, when he speaks, he lies. Dear viewers, we are only human beings, and we may commit mistakes and sins, but lying should never be one of them. A true Muslim should avoid lying at all costs, as if, as it contradicts the core of Islam. Once the messenger, peace be upon him, was asked whether a believer might commit different sins and mistakes, and he answered in the affirmative to all of them. But when he was asked whether a believer lies, he answered in the negative. In Islam, truthfulness is required, whether the matter is serious or not. Lying is not allowed even while joking. However, in Ramadan, this is even more important to avoid being a hypocrite by fasting from permissible things and committing forbidden things. Truthfulness while fasting is more serious than some people might think. Failing to be truthful in Ramadan will make you lose the rewards of fasting. As the messenger, peace be upon him, warned and said, Whoever does not leave lying and false testimony, Allah is in no need of him to leave his food and drink. This is more important when it comes to dealing with people as the effect of this behavior is increased and affects others. Dear viewers, truthfulness will benefit you in this world and in the hereafter. A truthful trader will have great rewards from Allah Almighty. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the truthful, trustworthy merchant is with the Prophet, peace be upon him, the righteous people and the martyrs on the day of resurrection. What a great place to be. Why not strive to be with them in the hereafter? It is a win-win situation and a chance that should not be wasted by any person. We should all try our best to be in that great place. Sadly, the reality of many people nowadays is in contrast to those important guidelines. Look at them and their dealings and practices, and their promises, and their sayings and actions. Many of them are not being the best they can be. Dear viewers, one of the aims of Ramadan is to clean ourselves from bad habits and purify it from bad characteristics and bad behaviors. One of the aims of Ramadan is to practically teach ourselves about good conducts and refine our manners and elevate our morals. Ramadan is a great learning season to educate ourselves, family, and friends about this great noble characteristics of truthfulness and other important morals as well. It is a great chance to change ourselves to be pure and better, inside and outside. Dear viewers, we supplicate to Allah Almighty to make us faithful and truthful in our speech and in our actions, and to grant us success in this great month, and make us good for ourselves and everyone around us. Amin. See you tomorrow again, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and His grace.